Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the Sawyer Squeeze. Let's go. The Sawyer Squeeze is one of the most popular water filtration systems found on the trail. And if you are thinking about buying one or you already own one and you want to learn more about it, you're in the right spot. What we're going to cover in this video includes the specs of the Sawyer Squeeze, how to use it, how to clean it, and some common problems and how you can work around them. Just right out of the gate, I want to get this out there. I'm not sponsored by Sawyer. I have no relationship with Sawyer. They have no idea I'm creating this video. This is just based off of my own personal experience and I'm trying to help you guys out there. So if you're thinking about getting a squeeze or you already have one and you want to learn more about how to use it and clean it and whatnot, that you can rely on folks who have field tested it like me extensively to share their experience. Let's start with the specs. The Sawyer Squeeze is about five inches long and a little bit less than two inches in diameter at its widest point. Let's throw these on a scale and see what we have for weight. When completely dry, it weighs in at 64.81 grams or 2.29 ounces. When it's wet, which is the condition you'll be carrying it in most of the time when you're on the trail, because I'm assuming you'll be using it quite often, 87.67 grams or 3.09 ounces. For filtering capabilities, it's rated at 0.1 microns, which means it will filter out 99.99999% of all bacteria. It also removes 99.9999 of all protozoa like Giardia and Cryptosporidium. That's what it filters out, but what it doesn't filter out are chemicals. So if you're in an area where there might be pesticides on farm fields running into a stream, it's not gonna filter that out. And it also doesn't filter out discolored or stained water. So if you've got iced tea type water coming in, that's what you're gonna get going out. It won't have any chunks in it, of course, but it still is going to be stained. Let's talk about how long it lasts. When I bought my first Sawyer Squeeze, there was something on the package about 1 million gallons of water it was supposed to filter. Now that's a lot of water. My experience in the field has been when you first buy the squeeze, the flow rate is pretty solid. And then over time, it just kind of slowly degrades. And you can get it back a little bit each time you flush it out, but it never seems to get back to that brand new flow rate. Sawyer does provide a lifetime warranty on the squeeze, which is a good thing if it ever breaks. There are a number of things that the Sawyer squeeze comes with, including a syringe, some plastic bags, a hose, some caps that go on it, and a mesh bag. Now I threw away everything except for the syringe, which you need to have to back flush it, and the mesh bag, which I don't use for the squeeze, but I do put my toiletries in there. There are two reasons I don't use the plastic bags that come with the Sawyer Squeeze. First is, I just find it easier to get water out of a stream or a lake using a plastic water bottle. Those bags just are more difficult to get water into, in my opinion. Second, the bags have a bit of a reputation among backpackers for getting leaks, and I just don't want to deal with leaks when I'm out on the trail. If you're just going to use it to filter water from a dirty water bottle into a clean water bottle, in my opinion, the only thing you need is the Sawyer Squeeze itself and the syringe for back flushing it. Although the main focus of this video is the full size Sawyer Squeeze, I did want to mention that Sawyer does have two other models that they produce. They have a Sawyer Mini and a Sawyer Micro. These are a little bit smaller than the full size Sawyer Squeeze, a little bit lighter, but from people who have used them, I've heard the flow rate is not quite as good. Still good, but not as good as the full size Sawyer Squeeze. If you're planning on doing a lot of inline gravity fed type filtering, then maybe one of those might be something you would consider. I personally only use the Sawyer Squeeze for squeezing water through into my main water bottles. So I don't care about the very, very slight difference in weight. I just want the maximum flow of throughput that I can get to save time and energy while I'm filtering water. Let's talk about how to use the Sawyer Squeeze. Like I said, I don't use the plastic bags that it came with. What I use is just a standard one liter bottle where the threads fit onto the Sawyer Squeeze. I'm using Aquafina. That's a brand sold here in the Midwest and it works great. Those bottles are practically indestructible and even if I did break one, well, for another 99 cents, I'll have one at the next town I come to. So you start by filling up your plastic water bottle in a creek. On this particular day, it was 26 degrees out. So man, my hands were cold. 
Then you thread the Sawyer squeeze onto the end of your source bottle. And what I like to do is in case any dirt, debris or germs or whatever got into that end of that squeeze since I last used it, I will squeeze out the first little bit of water onto the ground before pouring it into my clean water bottle. And I'll hold it at about a 30 degree angle when I'm squeezing it into my target water bottle. The reason I do that is because there may be contaminated water on the outside of the source water bottle or that may have dripped down onto the squeeze. And I don't want that running in and dripping into my clean water. It's important to keep your target or clean water bottle on a level surface. I can't tell you how many times I've started to squeeze the water in there and then it tips over because I've got it sitting on a rock or something. So save yourself a little bit of frustration, make sure it's on a level surface and you'll be good to go. From there, it's just a matter of squeezing the water out through the squeeze and into your target water bottle and you can use whatever method works best. You can use the two-handed squeeze, or sometimes I'll squeeze my palms together and squeeze it that way. You can even force it together with your knees too if you're looking for a little extra oomph. One of the things some people complain about is, well, after you squeeze it for a while, then you have to loosen it up to let more air in because you can't squeeze any more through. Well, that's fine. All you do is you just unscrew it, let air back into the water bottle, and then tighten it again. It literally takes like two seconds and after you've squeezed a bunch of water through this over the years, it just becomes so second nature, you don't even think about it. One thing I like to do is screw the Sawyer squeeze on one more time and then with an empty source water bottle, I'll squish out any additional water that was left in the squeeze. That way I don't have any of that other water that's still left in the squeeze leaking out into my pack over time. On to cleaning. People have asked, how often do you need to clean your Sawyer squeeze? That really depends on the quality of the water where you're hiking. When my son and I did the John Muir Trail back in 2018, we were out on the trail for 16 days and we never back flushed our Sawyer squeezes once. The reason is the water is crystal clear up there, very, very clean, and there's really not much to get clogged in your filter. However, we've gone in other places where the water is somewhat silty or dirty and every two or three days you've got to back flush it otherwise the flow rate gets to be really really bad. So the bottom line is just really depends on the quality of the water where you're hiking. The cleaner the water the less often you have to back flush it. I do back flush it though after every single trip that I go on. As soon as I get home that's one of the first things I do is back flush the squeeze, get it all cleaned out, sanitize it and then set it out to dry. The process for back flushing is fairly simple. First of all take some clean water and put it into a glass and then you draw water into the syringe. The Sawyer squeeze on the front part of it, it should be fairly obvious where the nozzle is. You connect the syringe to the nozzle and then you force the water in there pretty much as hard as you can. And you want to do this about a half a dozen times until the water is coming out clear. Now I will take the water that's coming out the other end and put it into a clear glass so I can see how dirty or clean it is. Once that water is coming out clean, you might not be done yet. One way to find out is to tap the Sawyer squeeze on your sink pretty firmly, on the top, on the bottom, on the sides, rotate it around until you've tapped all over the place. Then flush the water through there again. You'd be surprised at how much additional junk comes out of the Sawyer squeeze. Once you've tapped it a bunch of times and it's not coming out dirty anymore, then you know you're clean. An alternate way to back flush your Sawyer squeeze is to buy this coupling that you can get on Amazon for about three bucks and you screw it onto the Sawyer squeeze and then screw your uh, clean water bottle onto it and you can squeeze clean water through it similar to how you would force water through it with a syringe. The downside of this is I really don't think you get nearly the pressure that you get with the syringe so I'm going to continue using the syringe out on the trail. However, this is an option for you if you're interested in saving just a little bit of weight and bulk. After you get back from a trip and you're done back flushing your Sawyer squeeze, I do think it's a good idea to sanitize it as well. A time that I didn't sanitize it, I let it sit for a couple of months and then use it again, and the water coming out of it tasted very mildewy, so I suspect that it got moldy on the inside, and I couldn't get that funky taste out of it and had to stop using it. Sanitizing it is pretty easy. You start with one quart of water, and you put one cap full of bleach in it. Just use standard unscented bleach. You don't want any fragrances in there. Then you stir it up. 
Then you draw the bleach water into the syringe and force it through the Sawyer squeeze just like if you were back flushing it. I like to let it sit for about 15 minutes and then I will take an empty water bottle and squeeze air through it to blow all the excess bleach water out of it. Then I just set it on a windowsill and let it dry for a couple of days before putting it away for storage. So let's talk about some of the common complaints, issues, or problems people have with the Sawyer Squeeze. And I'll talk about some things you can do to help mitigate or prevent those things from happening to you. The first one is that some people say the O-ring falls out very easily and can get lost. If that O-ring's not in there, your squeeze is useless. You just won't have the ability to squeeze any water through without it just spraying all over the place. I have not had any issues with the O-ring coming out, but it's easy to lose because it's so small. And once you lose it, you're in big trouble. So my solution to this is just buy on Amazon a six pack of those things, a six pack for three bucks, that's 50 cents a piece, and take them with you. I say take two of them with you. That way if you lose one, you have an extra. And if somebody else you know loses one, you can give them your spare without giving them your only spare. I weighed one of them and it weighs seriously less than a gram. So for two grams, you can take two of the O-rings with you. The next issue is that you can't let it freeze. If your Sawyer squeeze is wet and it freezes, it will crack the membranes inside and it will be useless and you can't use it. What I do when I'm camping and it's gonna be below freezing overnight is I will put the squeeze in a little plastic baggie and I'll put it in the foot box of my quilt. And the quilt I use is the Enlightened Equipment Enigma and it's got a pretty big foot box. I've never had it fall out of there. It's in there and it's fine and it stays nice and warm. Another thing you can do that I've tried in the past is I'll take that same baggie and if I'm wearing like running tights because it's cold at night, I will just slide it in the side. Now if you sleep on your side, that's probably not gonna work, but that is another way. Other people have put them in shirt pockets. Other people I've heard have put on put them in their sleeves, whatever. Just make sure it doesn't freeze by keeping it close to your body heat inside your tent. The last thing is so many people use these and you might be at a camp with eight or 10 people and six of them are gonna have a Sawyer squeeze. And what I like to do is write my name on it. So that way if I get it mixed up or there's no question that my squeeze is mine. You may laugh and say, oh, that's pretty paranoid but it's just one way to make sure that something as important as your water filtration system is uncompromised. Another reason I think it's important to keep your name on your squeeze is that if you happen to lose it, it falls out of your pack or you leave it when you're getting water at a break, which does happen, it's pretty likely you're gonna get it back because most of the places you're hiking, your people around you are gonna know who you are and if they see a name on a Sawyer squeeze, and they know you're um, five miles ahead of them, they're just gonna pick it up and bring it with to the next shelter and you'll get it back. If you don't have your name on it and you lose it, you're probably not gonna ever see that again. So let's just do an overall summary. I've been using a Sawyer Squeeze for many years and I absolutely love it. It's convenient, lightweight, inexpensive. It does the job great. I really like the product. Talking about some of the downsides, the flow rate does decrease over time but I've not heard of any filter where the flow rate doesn't decrease over time. So that's nothing unique to the Sawyer Squeeze. And if you keep it flushed properly, you can extend the life of it quite a bit, in my opinion. Another issue is that the O-ring might fall out from time to time, but that doesn't really happen to me. And even if it did, I keep spares with me just in case. So I recommend you do the same thing. Lastly, those bags are known to fail, but just toss those. I just use a plastic bottle. They're basically indestructible. I've never had a plastic bottle break or fail. And even if it did, for 99 cents, I'll have another one at the next town. So I think you probably figured it out by now, but in conclusion, I do recommend the Sawyer Squeeze. I do think it's a great product. I've had a lot of success with it, and I plan to keep using it for years and years to come. As always, if you found any value in this video, please hit that like button. And if you're into outdoor hiking, backpacking kind of stuff, Hopefully you'll subscribe to my channel. Thanks and we'll see you out on the trail.